Tiny Folks is what happens when a developer takes modern sensibilities and mixes them with the aesthetics and sounds of everything that made the Game Boy a gaming powerhouse. It is simultaneously a nod to the old school and homage to the new. And for only $3.99, it's a game well worth your time. Tiny Folks tasks the player with retaking their throne by recruiting local townsfolk to the cause, training and arming them up, and then sending them into the swamps, mines, and fields to do battle with zombies, goblins, and a giant squid. It is part management sim and part turn-based RPG. While its simple gameplay is easy to learn, the path to success is not so straightforward. Its simplistic art style belies a gameplay that can prove challenging and rewarding to those willing to brave the task. I recommend Tiny Folks to any RPG fan or anyone who enjoyed their time with Darkest Dungeon. Now, let me tell you why that is. Tiny Folks is an absolutely charming RPG. The color palette and animations are limited yet effective, and the music and sounds are rife with nostalgia and joy. From just the title screen, it is clear the developer has a love for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. In fact, if someone presented Tiny Folks to me without context, I probably would assume it's a Game Boy Color title I hadn't heard of. I say that as a complete compliment. It so masterfully replicates the feel of an early 90s Game Boy game, I sincerely hope a company like Limited Run or Special Reserve releases a physical cartridge that I could play on original hardware. But if I had to single out the best part of the presentation, it would be the music. The chiptunes blasting during battles or while upgrading buildings in town are simply phenomenal. They capture the feel of 8-bit tracks while implementing enough advancements not to outstay their welcome. I found myself bobbing my head or tapping my feet while delegating tasks or smashing skeletons to bits. However, it would be nice to see the soundscape improved. While I found the bleeps and bloops of combat charming at first, they do feel a bit stale after the initial go around, and multiple playthroughs prove these sounds grating. Moving on, the interfaces for both interacting with the town and while in combat are intuitive and easy to discern for the most part. If you've played any turn-based RPG or a mobile management sim, everything will feel pretty familiar. Overall, the presentation of Tiny Folks is great. It really captures that feel of playing an RPG on an old school console like the Game Boy Color. The primary goal in Tiny Folks is to retake the castle. To complete this objective, the player has 45 days to raise an army, capture key points on the world map, and defeat the evil boss. The genius of Tiny Folks is in the flexibility to tackle this objective using its two parallel systems of town management and turn-based combat. Town management involves using the resources gathered during exploration to build and upgrade various buildings and armaments. Adding new buildings, such as a temple or hunting camp, allows the training of more classes. Classes. Expanding these buildings gives access to permanent upgrades to the party like better healing or prolonged status effects. Arguably, the decisions made in town are the most important. Spending money with frivolity or not carefully planning the growth of party members can lead to a swift end to the campaign. Townsfolk can be trained in a variety of classes and even be multi-class, which leads to higher level builds. For instance, training an archer as a warrior will lead to the captain class, an archer trained as a thug will lead to the assassin class. But even with these combos existing, the original base classes are still effective, as each class is different in abilities and stats. When a player is done in town, it's time to send out the crew. Points of interest on the world map give some choice to progression, but the main goal is to reach the castle on the far side of the screen. Once a team is assembled and location selected, the battles can begin. Turn order for both sides is determined by the placement on the field. The first row goes first, second row goes second, and so on. The goal is pretty straightforward. Wipe out the enemies. At the top of the screen is a meter showing the group's progress through that particular map. Each node represents a battle to overcome, culminating with a boss fight. Now, the player has the option to flee at any time except during the boss fight. Resources are only gathered if you make it back to town, so if the squad wipes on the boss or another battle, all the resources are lost. 
tiny folks will quickly put your adventurers in the dirt if they are ill-equipped or simply a poor combination of classes. Class and equipment experimentation is an absolute must if one is to survive to the final boss. Simple stat boosts occur with weapon and armor upgrades, meanwhile artifacts, which are kind of like accessories, provide unique abilities like reduced cost of spells or increased gold. Putting all of these options together on a townsfolk can make each one feel distinct, even if they are the same class. But the most fun I had was actually related to the combination of the party itself. After several rounds of trial and error, I discovered powerful teams where the sum was greater than the parts. Learning which teams worked best for which locations also increased the challenge and enjoyment. With several game modes and difficulties available, tiny folks pushed me to try out different strategies and manage my gold in unorthodox ways. There is plenty of replay value for such a small game. Now, after everything I've said, you might be thinking, JLo, this sounds basically like Darkest Dungeon. And you're totally right. Tiny Folks is Darkest Dungeon for the Game Boy. No joke, that's what you're getting. Granted, it's not as deep nor difficult, but in essence, they are one and the same from a bird's eye view. That doesn't mean Tiny Folks is any less interesting or great. If anything, it's a compliment as Darkest Dungeon is a fantastic game. The only thing Tiny Folks is missing to truly compete with Darkest Dungeon is more content. If there was just more to the game, it would immediately elevate itself, and only time will tell if that'll happen. Overall, there's a lot to pick through despite a presentation that suggests a much simpler game. Don't let the cute pixel warriors trick you. This game can be challenging, especially in some of the alternate game modes, but I think Tiny Folks shows that being small doesn't mean one can't accomplish big objectives. It's not often I come across a title like Tiny Folks. On one hand, its aesthetic is directly from a bygone era, an era I grew up in, and I can easily appreciate what it's trying to do with that. On the other hand, its gameplay formula is not far away from another game I really enjoyed, Darkest Dungeon, but is different enough to warrant a play alongside its own inspiration. Considering its low asking price and simple yet engaging gameplay, I really don't see any reason someone should skip this game if anything I've said intrigues you. I recommend Tiny Folks. Have yourself a good one.